Till now, we have covered Azure Container Registry, Azure Container Instances, where you are good to run a single container or a group of containers. Uh, but today, we are going to talk about Azure Container Services. Well, these videos will fall under the Microsoft Technologies uh, playlist. So it would be more like an overview in what all Azure provides with respect to AKS. Okay, because we all know Kubernetes itself is a great technologies which require a entire playlist or video series to cover. And hopefully we will do it in the future, coming future for sure. So please treat this video as an AKS video where you'll be learning what Azure provides to run the Kubernetes and what you should know as per the Microsoft Technologies certification. Hello everyone, my name is Arun and let's get started. So containers are great. They provide you with an easy way to package and deploy services allow for process isolation, immutability, efficient resource utilization. They are even lightweight in creation. But when it comes to actually running containers in production, you can end up with thousands of containers, maybe more than that, okay? And it's not easy to maintain them. These containers needs to be deployed, managed, and connected, updated, taken care gracefully all the time, okay? And that's where Kubernetes come into the picture to actually rescue you. So Kubernetes is a powerful container management tool that automates the deployment and management of containers. Or in other words, containers are uh, a good way to bundle and run your applications. In a production environment, you need to manage the containers that run the application and ensure that there is no downtime. For example, if a container goes down, another container needs to start. Wouldn't it be easier if this behavior was handled by a system or an orchestrator? So that's where Kubernetes come into the picture and Azure provides you this facility as a managed service. What's, what could be better than that, right? You need not to manage the entire cluster. You not, need not to worry about those uh, VMs on which you are running your cluster and then the containers and pods. It would be managed by Azure. And the beauty is you need not to pay anything for the masters. So if you talk about the architecture, it would be more like a master and uh, node kind of architecture. So it would look like uh, something like that, where we would have some nodes running and they are talking to the master and getting managed and there would be an API by which you can get the info from the master. So it would be, it would look like something uh, like this, Azure Kubernetes services, okay? And yeah, it, it seems okay. Now, the thing is for this particular area, we need not to pay anything. We only need to pay for the nodes, okay? And this master has several components, as I said, we will be covering the entire Kubernetes technology in the upcoming videos. But for now, just for the sake of information, it would be API server, Kube API server. If I could write here, it would be Kube API server. There is a ad set that would be deep database. It would be Kube scheduler. And there would be cube control manager. 
Okay. All right. Okay, so for this part of the cluster, you got to pay nothing. There is no charges for the master, but of course, you got to pay for the nodes that you're running. And MS recommends a minimum of three nodes for resiliency. One, two, and three, minimum of three nodes for resiliency. And the trick thing is you cannot change the size of the node, but you can change the count if you got to do the other scaling, scale up or scale down. You can do the uh, scaling on the count of the node, but not on the size of the node. Okay. Now let's check a few other things that AKS providers. Uh, let me use this. This is our AKS. Uh, okay. No. All right. Mm -hmm. So this is our AKS and we need to talk about the certain uh, Okay. Uh, all right. I'm just trying to grab some information here that I could write down so that it would be easy for us to summarize once we end the video. So there are a few things. Okay. So sorry, it's getting a little crazier here. Come on, don't do this. All right, no problem. Okay, so let's get this straight. Let me put it in a single box. All right, so what is there that AKS provides us apart from the managed it is a managed services. We talked about it. We need not to pay for the master only for the node. And let's see what other facilities, what other benefits we have if we're going to use AKS. So very first thing is it also gives a great feature that is integration with Azure AD. AKS lets you integrate with Azure AD and you can use Kubernetes role-based access controls. You can control the access for your AKS. Okay, that is a great security feature. And you need not to worry about creating other users. You can easily use the groups that you already have in the Azure AD. Okay, so let me write this down. Integrate with Azure AD and use the RBAC solution. Now, Azure Monitor will help you gather all the logs, all the health-related information, or it collects information from container regarding memory and processor metrics from nodes and controllers. And this monitoring data can be diverted or put in the Azure Log Analytics workspace that you can analyze later on. So Azure Monitor can be integrated with AKS to get the information on the logs and on the health alerting system. Okay, now it also provide you auto scaling or you can say scale in and out feature that you can utilize as demand for resources change the number of cluster nodes or pods that you run your service can automatically scale up or down okay what else it provides it provides you a various it's not like it's running on some particular version it provides uh, versions of Kubernetes that you can choose to run your AKS cluster on. It provides, it offers you multiple Kubernetes versions. Okay, 
So multiple Kubernetes versions. All right. Now it can AKS allows you to utilize disks that is like Azure disk or Azure files to mount storage volumes for persistent data. You can utilize Azure files and Azure disks for volumes as a persistent volume. All right. Let me write this down. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, AKS cluster, you can deploy into an existing virtual network. What's a great thing, right? You have your virtual network, you have your private network, and you can put your cluster in that virtual network in such a way that every port in the clusters is assigned an IP address in the virtual network, and you can directly communicate with other ports in the cluster and other nodes in the virtual network. Pods can connect also to other services in a peer virtual network and to on-premises networks over express route or site-to-site -site VPN connection. Isn't that great? So integrate with VNet. And we all know Kubernetes uh, has a rich ecosystem of uh, development and management tools such as Helm, Draft, and the Kubernetes extension for Visual Studio Code. These tools work seamlessly with AKS. AKS supports the Docker image format. For private storage of your Docker images, you can integrate AKS with ACR as well. All right, so it supports multiple tools and you can also integrate or uh, ACR, ACR for private repositories. So these are a few wonderful features which uh, Azure provides uh, with AKS. All right. Okay, cool. So if I need to summarize this AKS, it is a managed services which will help you to create a cluster in minutes and it would be managed by Azure. You need not to pay for the master and everything would be monitored for you. And you're gonna only pay for the nodes. You cannot change the size, but you can change the count for scaling purpose. There are other features that help you uh, manage your cluster, like integrate with Azure AD, Azure Monitor, how the scaling is there. You have multiple versions. You have Azure File and Azure Disk to create your persistent volumes. Uh, it can be integrated with VNet where parts can talk to even on-premises and it supports multiple tools like Helm, Draft and things like that. And you can also integrate AKS with the Azure Container Registry for your private storage. Well, that's all about AKS and uh, thank you for watching. In next video, we'll see the demonstration and I'll, I'll, I'll come back pretty soon with the entire playlist of the Kubernetes. Well, thank you for watching. You have a good day.